How's it going heisters? For today's video, we're going to take a look at some pro tips for Payday 3. We have a lot of tips to go over, so I do want to jump straight into it, but before we get into it, I did want to quickly remind everybody to drop a like on the video if you find it useful, and let me know in the comments which of these tips helped you the most. Anyways, the first tip I want to go over is in regards to armor. If you look at everybody's name in the bottom left, you'll see a number next to it, and that number represents the number of downs that player can receive. Once you've exceeded your total amount of downs, the next time you go down, you'll then have to spectate for a certain amount of time. And that number is determined by which armor you wear. So first we're gonna start off with the light armor and we're gonna get a total of three downs with that. You also get a total of three downs with the medium armor. With the standard armor, you get a total of four downs. You also get the most mobility as well as the least amount of protection. And with the heavy armor, you're only allowed two downs. And obviously with that one, you get the least mobility with the most amount of protection. So armor not only affects your mobility and the amount of damage you can receive, but it also affects the amount of downs you'll receive. Destroying weapons will destroy all the attachments you purchase for that weapon, even the attachments that cost C stacks. So keep that in mind if you plan on destroying your weapons. Meleeing civilians is faster than shouting at them, at least when it comes to just one or two civilians, like on Road Rage for example. You would be better off smacking the civilians around instead of shouting at them because it's a lot faster. But in those instances where you have a group of civilians, then you'll want to go ahead and shout at them. Speaking of road rage, the truck will go faster if everyone is in the circle. It goes the slowest when only one person is in the circle, and it doesn't move at all if nobody's in the circle. But with every person added, it goes a little bit faster. So if you want to speed up that escort part on the road rage heist, then try to get everybody in your lobby to get in the circle. Next tip I want to go over is in regards to shooting antennas. And this mechanic doesn't happen too often, but every once in a while you'll hear Shade say, Fuck, the FBI agent is here. Shoot the van's antenna to blind her. And when she says that, that means there's an FBI van nearby that has a satellite dish on top of it that you'll have to destroy. So I'm gonna go ahead and show what this FBI van looks like. In this example, we were doing the dirty ice heist and I believe it's always gonna spawn in the same area on this heist, which is near where the escape van initially spawns. So if you ever hear Shade talking about the FBI van with the antenna, then you're gonna wanna run to this location and destroy the antenna that's on top of the FBI van. I believe this FBI van is supposed to be like Captain Winners in Payday 2. This is Payday 3's version of it. But yeah, you can destroy the dish within a couple of seconds. So it's not that hard to do. And I don't believe you'll see this FBI van on every heist. The only ones that I know of are Dirty Ice, Rock the Cradle, and Road Rage. But yeah, if you ever hear Shade talking about the FBI van, that's the van you want to look out for. And that's how you destroy the antenna that's on top of it. Now we all know that you can replace the oxygen before the thermal drill breaks on Golden Shark. Or at least I'm pretty sure most people knew that. But did you know that you can also fix the regular drill before it breaks? I believe it can trigger anywhere with 15 to 45 seconds left on the drill. So you want to stay near it. And when you see that option appear, just hold down your interact button and you should be able to repair it before it breaks. There's no limit to the amount of escorts you can trigger. As long as guards aren't currently searching, you can make any guard escort you off the premises repeatedly over and over. And the reason I pointed this tip out is because I know a lot of times, especially on No Rest for the Wicked, it can be kind of hard to take the executive hostage down to the vault without being seen by guards. So in order to make that pathway a little bit easier, you can have one of the players in your lobby get noticed by a guard and have them escort them off the premises. And that should clear up the path for you and your hostage to make it to the vault. The cover up perk stops infinite radio calls. Whenever you do a heist on the overkill difficulty, there's always a lead guard that gets infinite radio calls whenever you kill him. And eventually that's gonna make the heist go loud. But there's a way you can prevent him from getting infinite radio calls. And the way you prevent it is by using the cover-up skill. For whatever reason, when you take down a lead guard using the cover-up skill, he'll no longer receive any more radio calls. Not sure if this is intended or not, but this worked 
as of when I recorded this video and it definitely seems useful when it comes to doing heist on overkill. You can use knives as lures. All you have to do is throw it where you want the guard to go and that guard will leave his current area to go investigate that noise. A couple things I should point out though. You want to make sure you don't have the retriever skill equipped if you plan on using knives as lures because if you do, the knife is gonna stick into the surface instead of breaking apart. And if the guards see that knife, then they'll all start searching. So if you don't want them to start searching, then make sure you don't have that retriever skill equipped. But yeah, if you use the skill that increases the amount of knives you can carry, as well as the skill that increases the amount of knives you get from ammo bags, then as you can imagine, you can get a lot of lures from your throwing knives. Speaking of knives, you can also use them to distract the security guard that's watching the cameras. And in order to make this work, I did have to have the retriever perk equipped. It didn't work when I didn't have it equipped. And they also can't be searching either. I believe I tried it when they were already searching around and it wouldn't work then. So you have to have the retriever skill equipped and the guards can't already be searching. But if you make it to the security room, all you have to do is just throw your throwing knife at the desk next to the guard. It'll distract him for just a quick second. You should see like a, a red walkie talkie appear above his head, but then he'll go right back to looking at the computer. And if you're able to get this interaction, once you step outside of the security room, you'll notice all of the cameras are no longer working. And I know some of y'all are probably asking, why throw the knife at the desk? Why not just kill the security guard? Well, if you don't have any spare radio calls, then that's gonna trigger a search. So this is one way to avoid having to use a radio call. You can just throw the knife at the desk, distract him for a split second, and that'll turn off all the cameras without having to kill that security guard. Now, this isn't the only way to distract that security guard though. You can also turn off all the cameras by using loot bags and you're pretty much gonna use the same strategy. You'll throw a loot bag next to the security guard to distract him. And as soon as you throw it down, you wanna pick it right back up. And if you did it correctly, all of the cameras should be turned off. So you can do that with either knives or loot bags. Speaking of radios left, I should probably point out that technically you get more than what you see in the game. On Overkill, for example, you'll get a total of two radios that you can use before the guards will start searching. But if you were to down a third security guard and answer his radio, it'll just trigger a search. So in overkill, you're allowed three radio calls without triggering the alarm. But if you try to answer the radio while they're already searching, or if you try to answer the radio for the fourth time, then it will trigger the alarm. Instead of looking like this, which is how it currently looks, it should probably look more like this. And I got this image from Reddit, by the way. So yeah, that's another thing you wanna keep in mind. Even if you run out of radio calls, as long as the guards aren't searching, you should still be able to get another radio call without triggering the alarm. Also, whenever you see first response arrive, you may wanna stop shooting because the negotiation stage is gonna start soon after that. And if you shoot during the negotiation stage, then it'll reduce the timer to zero and it'll start the assault stage right away. So yeah, whenever you see first response arrive, you know the negotiation stage is gonna come next. And if you want the negotiation stage to last as long as possible, even if you're just shooting into the air, it'll end the negotiation stage. So if you want it to last as long as possible, you want to avoid shooting, and you may also want to avoid going outside. I noticed for whatever reason, when I stepped outside during the negotiation stage, it ended all negotiations and started the assault wave right away. Also, I hardly ever see anybody use this mechanic, but there are a couple of heists where you can close the shutters and windows. So on No Rest for the Wicked, all you have to do is just press these buttons that are next to the windows. You can also do the same thing on Dirty Ice. You can close all the shutters by pressing these buttons that are next to the windows. But yeah, if you don't want people outside the building seeing what you're doing inside, then you can close those shutters and that should help you out. Speaking of Dirty Ice, there's an easy way to get two out of the three codes without actually having to do anything. One of the codes is gonna be on this whiteboard. You will need a micro cam in order to see it, but just throw your micro cam on that table. You can see one code there, and you can also see the other code on the employee of the month frame. 
that's located in the main area. And grabbing these codes this way makes it a little bit easier to guess what the code is. It's not gonna give you access every time, because there is a third code that you can't see until you actually break in but more often than not you will be able to open this door by just looking at one of those two codes that we showed earlier if it was neither of those codes then you're gonna have to break in a different way but that'll tell you that it's gonna end up being the third code which is located on the cabinet in the VIP room Unlike Payday 2, ammo drops are instants, meaning that if you pick up the ammo that the enemies drop, it's not going to take away ammo from other players on your team. So yeah, in Payday 2, I remember I used to avoid using the ammo bags and just pick up the dropped ammo. But in Payday 3, it doesn't really matter. You can just pick up all the dropped ammo you see because that's not going to take away the dropped ammo that your teammates see. Their ammo drops are still going to be there. Couple of tips for Golden Shark. The red key card will always be in the same room as the employee. And you can check and see if the employee is in the first room by just looking in the window. Sometimes you'll also see them on the cutscene. I guess you could also use a motion sensor in the second room as well, but you won't see him right away every time. Sometimes he'll have to get up and walk around before you see him. And when it comes to flipping switches, you can use your micro cam to help that process go by quicker. When you use the micro cam, you don't have to go all the way back to the vault. You just pull out your camera, look at it, see what it is. You may have to zoom in, but you can see what it is, flip it, and then just go to the next switch. Also, Wondering how many skill points there are? Apparently there's a total of 21 and here's the level you get each skill point. So you'll get your 21st and last skill point at level 100. And the last tip I wanna go over is more of a PSA. When it comes to no rest for the wicked, do not, I repeat, do not throw your extra thermite into the fire one right after the other because I'm gonna show you what happens when you do that. And I notice a lot of people have been doing it. So I don't know if you noticed, but Shade tells you not to overdo it because every time you overdo it, it triggers the sprinkling, which is obviously gonna slow down the whole process. So the way to determine whether or not you need to throw extra thermite in there is by looking at the fire itself. If the fire is taller than you, you do not need to throw thermite into it. If you do throw thermite into it, when it's taller than you, it'll trigger the sprinklers, which you then have to turn off. Instead, what you want to do is you want to wait till the fire calms down a little bit and becomes more or less at your height. If the fire is at your height, then you can throw the extra thermite bag in there. So yeah, not really a pro tip, but I've been seeing a lot of people struggle with that. But that sums up all the tips we have for this one. Again, if you found this video useful, be sure to drop a like on it or let me know in the comments below. And if you have any pro tips in regards to Payday 3, let us know about those as well. Anyways, I hope y'all have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.